Good morning and welcome to Bethlehem Christian Church on this beautiful Sabbath day. We're happy that you've joined us this morning and pray that the service may be one of joy and one certainly a blessing to your heart. I want to thank the team that's put the service together. They worked hard and pulled it together and we deeply appreciate that. Many thanks to each one of them. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let us ever rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray together. Our gracious and loving Father, we give you thanks for this day, for the joy of worship, for the opportunities you afford us in life and in living. And we pray now that as our hearts are tuned toward your word and your truth, Lord, you may speak to them. Use us as we give our thanks and our praise unto you for all that you do. For it's in Jesus' name that we would pray this day. Amen. and girls here we are again do you know what today is it's father's day can you name one thing that your father's done for you that you're thankful for today i brought a few things that remind me of my father as i was growing up the first one is a cap i don't even know if he knew he was keeping the sun off his head but he always had a cap if he was outside and inside too sometimes and um, he didn't have any hair on top of his head and he always told me that the birds got it and so I guess this was to keep the birds from stealing anymore do you know that my father always made sure I had clothes to wear and food to eat and a house to live in 
He made sure all my needs were taken care of. It was really important to me that my father spent time with me. Now here's an interesting item. You're probably thinking, mm -hmm, that's an old truck. It's a pickup truck. Daddy was very proud of his truck and he trusted me to clean it out on Saturday afternoons. I knew he trusted me to do a good job. And this last one is the most important to me. It's a model of a little church. I love my father most of all because he took me to church every week so I could learn about God, even when it snowed. He trusted our preacher and my Sunday school teachers to teach me. My father knew that knowing God is the most important thing in life. And now that I'm a Christian, I'm very thankful that he did. I made sure my girls went to church every week, and they are strong Christian women and Christian mothers today. Our Bible verse today says, listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. How many of you listen to the wise things that your father say? After all, your father is older and has far more experience and is much wiser than you are. Sometimes a father could be your real dad. Sometimes a father can be a stepdad. Sometimes a father can be a man who treats us as though um, they were our dad, and sometimes a father could be a preacher or maybe a teacher who teaches us important things. Maybe you're a kid that has a wonderful dad who does special things that you like to do. Maybe he takes you camping or on, a, on special trips or plays soccer or football with you or takes you shopping at the dollar store or maybe to get an ice cream cone. Maybe he teaches you how to do things like ride a bike or how to fish, how to play a musical instrument or how to fix something. Maybe he reads the Bible or Bible stories to you and teaches you about God. Of all the things he can teach you, that's the most important thing. But you know, sometimes kids don't have a dad that they ever see or who they don't see very often. But they might have a stepdad, a grandpa, another relative, or a good friend that almost seems like a dad to them. God has blessed most of you with a godly father, and he's commanded you to show him honor and respect. You should also remember to pray for your father and ask God to give him the wisdom he needs to train you in the way God wants you to grow. I think it'd be a good thing to say a word of thanks to your fathers. Thank him for providing for your physical needs, the house you live in, the food you eat, the clothes you wear. Thank him for the wisdom he shares, even though he may not have, always have all the answers. Finally, thank him for living a godly life and setting a good example for you to follow. Now we're gonna take the letters of father, like we did with mother, and describe our dads. The F is for forgiving. Even when we disobey or do something wrong, our Father's willing to forgive us. A is for attentive. When we need somebody to talk to, our Father's willing to listen to what we have to say. T is for teacher. This person teaches us to make the important decisions we face each day. He may offer advice, or he might just be a good listener, but he's always there to help us. H is for, I think I just said that, helpful. Did I just say that? E is for energetic. No matter how tired he is, Daddy always seems to find the energy to do things with us and for us. And R is for ready. This person's always ready to reach out in love to us. He's ready to do whatever we need. 
Now I know that some of you may not have a father in your home, but you have a heavenly father who wants to do all of these things for you. After all, that's who earthly fathers use as an example. God is our perfect father. We can trust him completely. He wants you to talk to him like you would with your dad or with a good friend here on earth. We call that praying. Praying is just talking to God like you talk to anyone else. He loves you so much and he wants you to love him too. Why don't we talk to him right now? Father, thank you for letting us be here to celebrate Father's Day today. Thank you for putting people in our lives that can be like a father to us. And most of all, thank you for our fathers. And we pray that you will bless them with the wisdom needed to be good fathers. And dear Lord, we thank you for our fathers. Help us this day to show our love and appreciation to our fathers. And may we always remember to thank you, our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. In following the theme that Janet used in her children's moments, some first graders was asked by her, their Sunday school teacher if they would draw a picture of God. And one child drew a brightly colored rainbow. Another drew God as an old man coming down out of the clouds. And one little boy drew his God that looked like a superman. But the best drawing of all came from a little girl. And when she was asked, she said, I don't know what God looks like, so I just drew a picture of my father. With that in mind, let us pray to our Heavenly Father. Join me in a season of prayer. O oh, loving God, as we worship you today, we want to be especially aware of the many caring ways fathers are like you. Those who are fathers lead them to rededicate themselves, to interact with their children and their family, expressing themselves with their attributes, knowing how they fall short. We ask for your forgiveness. And give us a sense of ministry of the Holy Spirit that is always within us. Heavenly Father, on this day where we honor fathers, we are especially aware of the needs of our congregation. We pray for parents who work hard to provide for their loved ones. We also pray for those who are without work and for those who find it difficult to spend enough time with their families for those who are agonizing over the direction their children have, have chosen to go. Help us, Father, to do our part in creating a stable family and a stable family life in which seeks to glory, glorify your holy name. We also pause to ask your blessings upon our country asking you to guide our leaders so that they might follow your teachings. Last but not least, we pray for our church family. Those who are ill, make them aware of your healing presence. Strengthen them with the might of your spirit. We ask these things in the name and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I will be reading from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. And he said, There was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. 
And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion, and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and bring a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today, as Americans honor fathers on this Father's Day weekend, there'll be some gifts, I'm sure. There'll be some phone calls. There may be some Zooms. Some with grateful remembrance, the part that a father played in their home. Some with bitter pasts that don't really want to recall anything about a father and cannot help but reflect upon the relationship in life that's exemplified in fatherhood. The tradition of love and acceptance and understanding and caring and heartache and pain and protection and even openness, even that of the Lord. We might characterize a father, we might define a father, we might explore fatherhood, but to do that could exhaust more time than we have this morning. 
and more perhaps than we really care to share. We turn to the scripture and we find some interesting stories of fatherhood, some things the Lord would have us know. We turn to the Old Testament and we find some stories that are heartbreaking. And we don't have to go far to look for heartbreaking stories even in our day and time. But some that in that Old Testament that are a real mess. And David is one who found out with his own life that sin follows sin. Wrong follows wrong and he could not blame anyone but himself. Even if he tried, he couldn't blame anyone but himself. David had been quite a character. He had stolen someone's wife and he had had her husband killed. And the next generation coming along saw all of this and saw that it was okay. It was all right. It, it, it was okay. Now who's at fault? Who is at fault? He was aware of his own sin of adultery with Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah. Was it because of his own guilt that his son was following right along in his own footsteps? And he couldn't condemn his firstborn son. Anything was okay and he went right along and resentment began to swell and his other son could not take it any longer and David had lost control of his household and could do nothing but stand there in the shadows and watch his children because of his own guilt and his own sin. And he wouldn't punish a sinful son and thus he lost not one but he lost both sons. As one killed the other, David still could not forgive. There was a veteran one time who'd served and he gave his Christian testimony in a service. And the veteran, he said one night he was drunk and a Christian was reading his Bible before getting into his bunk. And the veterans, he said, I cursed the soldier and then I threw a heavy muddy boot at him and told him to just shut up. I didn't want to hear any of that stuff. And he said, the next morning when I arose, I found that boot that I had thrown at the soldier and it was at the edge of my bunk, spit polished. The veteran said that event made such an impression on me, I began attending worship just to see what was going on and what I could learn. And I eventually became a Christian. Thank God for that other soldier who made me sit up and think. How far-fetched it may seem sometimes in thinking, but examples are given and are related. David had not done that. We move into the New Testament and then we find that familiar story of a son who claimed his inheritance from his father while his father was still living and he wanted to go off and do his thing. And he did. And after a while he had gone through everything that his father had given him and wound up in a pig pen. But finally wrestling a while with himself, he came to himself and realized you know, maybe it wasn't so bad. Maybe it wasn't bad as I thought it was. And maybe after I've scoundered everything, maybe I need to go home and see if he will let me come home. And so he made his journey 
to seek forgiveness. The young man had grown up in a home where he had learned that the father allowed the son to make decisions. Now what Jesus would have us see is that God in all of his wisdom decided to give us the freedom to decide for ourselves. We are free. We can remain in his presence or we can run away from it. Free to come to him or free to go because that's the way he created us. He didn't create us and hold a string but he created us and we were free. And when our freedom has led us by the rough waters, when we've made messes of our lives and recognize the foolishness of life apart from God, God welcomes us back into his household. Son in the parable decided, maybe I need to go back home. And he rose and came to his father, but while yet at a distance, the father saw him. I wonder how many prayers he'd prayed for that son to come home. Or that that son was okay. But seeing him, even a glimpse of him, it did something to his heart and his very being. And he rejoiced. He had compassion and ran and embraced that son as they met and kissed him and loved him. And this is the God that we worship. This is the God who welcomes us home regardless of how far and how far along and how long we have wandered. Expect a father had been waiting and watching a long, long time for that son to return. What parent does not hope and pray and watch for a wayward child to turn home? Jesus said that God is more than a good parent, even the best parent on earth. For he waits patiently for our freedom to catch up with us and turn us toward home. Many a family I have worked with where a son or a daughter thought they knew it all and left home and did their thing and sometimes would call from the police station or somewhere else, I'm homeless, I don't have anything to eat, I can't get back home to you. And many of those parents who had longed and prayed for that phone call to help that son or daughter to get on with life, perhaps through rehab, perhaps through a loving relationship and nurturing that. I expect as that son came home, he wondered what to expect. Maybe it'll be a scolding, and I bet he'll scold me. I bet he'll say, I told you you'd go through it, and you'd spend it all. I bet there'll be a real tussle with words, and a real tongue lashing because I told you so. But he seeks forgiveness and perhaps wonders if it will be lorded over him for the rest of his life. But God does not do that. I visited at a home one time of an elderly couple and the man was congenial and his wife was a good cook. And the day was pleasant throughout except one brief instance. It happened while touring the house and her husband had built for her early in the marriage. Came to a closet and he remarked with considerable indignation, I told him it should never been built there. 
Neville. The rebuke in words spoken for her husband's benefit was in sharp contrast to what had prevailed earlier. You would have thought the error of judgment had just been made rather than many years earlier. I exchanged a sympathetic glance with the husband and wondered how many times in their marriage he'd been whipped with that over that misplaced closing. She just had to check an ancient entry in her ledger of wrongs sustained and demanded another partial payment. We don't find this attitude with the father as the son came home. We find nothing but joy. Joy in the heart of a father, and that's all there is in the heart of the Lord when we come to him. Jesus said it as plain as it can be said. I tell you, there'll be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 who need no repentance. Now, the son had no way of knowing that his father would welcome. All he knew was he'd made a mess of things. He had made a real mess of his life. But what he did was what members of AA call bottoming out. Bottoming out. He'd gone the limit and he couldn't go any further. He had bottomed out. And it took no great thinking to see what he had done. Once sick of home, couldn't stand it. Now sick for home. Finally, he came to himself and he said, how many of my father's hired servants live and have enough to spare? And yet I've reached the point where I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. He reached and he learned some important words that so often in our society we need to learn and keep learning and not afraid to say them. I'm wrong. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Simple words, and yet sometimes they have a hard time of coming out of that thing we call the mouth and the heart. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Please forgive me. Forgiveness always requires some restoration. And that's why true forgiveness is sometimes difficult even with family members. I've seen families torn apart. Over $15. and can't learn to say, I'm sorry, or forgive me, I made a mistake. How can one forgive a deeply felt wrong? How can we forgive that of what you've done? Only through the love of Jesus Christ and the power that love brings. The Apostle Paul, what does he teach about love? He said, love is patient. And Lord, we need some of that. It keeps no record of wrongs. It, love never fails. 
If it's true love, it never fails. The contrite heart was enough for this father. And it's enough, I believe, with our Heavenly Father. The psalmist said this, the sacrifice is acceptable to God. Or a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. The Father's love had never ceased. It had never stopped yearning for the best for that son. It had never given up, even though it seemed like a long, long time. And he may never come to himself, and he may never come home. And I may never see him again. But that father never gave up. A father waiting and watching welcomed a son home. A son rebelled, a father loved. A son left home, a father still loved. He saw him away off and he went to meet him. He loved him. God has that same kind of compassion for us through Jesus Christ. The forgiveness of sins and wrongs and floundering and mistakes and mess ups. And through his love, he welcomes the sinner. He welcomes and loves us when we're willing to meet him where we are. Blessed is that father who accepts his role and his limitations, but yet does the best that he can by the power of God and his love. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, continue to use us as fathers in setting examples for generations to come. And knowing, yes, that word, son or daughter, I forgive. And I still love you. And God loves you too. Praying so in the name and in the spirit of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Before we leave each other today, I'd like to thank you, for each of you, for your support and your loyalty and your love for this church. It is you that encourage us, and your encouragement keeps us going on. We're working diligently till that day when we can reopen our sanctuary, but I want to say up front, we are not in a hurry. We want to make sure 
we do this thing safely and correctly. And in the meantime, continue to pray for us and support us in any way that you can, especially your gifts. Let us pause now and, and pray together as we have the benediction. Let us go forth in the spirit of a loving Father and let us give and receive the blessings, great and small, based on our love for him. May God bless you. May God forgive each of us for our shortcomings and the wrongs that we do. And may God himself direct us so that we might find a life filled with joy and love. In Jesus' name, amen.